Back on the Toffee TV, it is my three things. Everton nil, Newcastle United nil at Goodison Park tonight. I said on my match reaction, I don't really know how to feel about it. It's a, a game Everton haven't lost, so that's always good when we don't lose games of football. I just feel like we were... I just get the feeling at the moment that we're, we're like a lower league team playing and hoping that to keep it tight and nicks up and that, that winds me up a little bit I know other people will accept that that's fine it, it winds me up I think there's more to give I think we've got a bit more adventure a bit better coaching a bit more freedom we might be able to win some of these games but as the uh, the saying goes if you can't win it don't lose it and that's what happened tonight and Newcastle they had all. They looked like a better side. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't sat there going, "These are a really good side," because I don't think they played that well themselves. They just moved the ball around well. The fast on the counter attack. Harvey Barnes a threat. Murphy even, uh, and obviously Anthony Gordon's pace, but he, he didn't have a good game tonight, Gordon. Uh, but I was impressed with Bruno uh, Gimeres and uh, Joe Linton in midfield. I wasn't that impressed with Tanali, I said it on the other thing, but I thought those two in midfield were good. We just don't have that little bit of care on the ball the way they have it. Like Bruno's their metronome, keeps it all ticking over, we don't have that. And Joe Linton's got the power in them legs and he's a threat and again we don't have that. We're a little bit awkward. I don't think the manager's got the makeup of it right yet. But that's it. Uh, we drew nil nil. Jordan Pickford's made a big save from a penalty. And it's got us a point. And that's my first talking point, Jordan Pickford, who I don't think has started the season particularly well for Everton. He obviously had a good season last season for us, went the Euros, was brilliant for England. They got to the final, of course. He had a, you know played his part and played a really big part in getting through to the final. And then I think he might have had three weeks off and was back at it again. And... I, it looked to me like that break wasn't long enough for him. He's come back in and he's just been a little bit uncertain at times and just hasn't been as sharp as self. But I thought tonight he was he was like much, much better tonight. Obviously got his first clean sheet of the season in the Premier League. I thought he'd come and took some crosses, which is good. Come and punched a couple of corners that were dangerous in the, the six-yard box. And in general, did, did most things right. It's a couple... There was one early on that he, he drove forward to Calvert-Lewin. It was a great knock. And Calvert-Lewin just sort of didn't bother going after it. Whereas if he would have gone after it, full pelt would have been in behind to uh, Trippier. Just went over the head and he, he sort of hesitated. Shall I, shall I? If he'd gone for it, it was actually a great ball by Pickford. Some of his other kicking was a little bit wavered. I think he rushes things sometimes. But I just thought he was... He was the best player overall. And tonight, obviously, he's got man of the match. There's big moments in games of football. I don't think Everton are playing consistently well enough where you've got a player who is doing loads of great things throughout the 90. Like last week, Dwight McNeil got man of the match against Palace for coming up with two big moments. Uh, when I looked at his numbers, he'd done well, but he, he wasn't you know, clearly the man of the match. Come up with two big moments. And Jordan Pickford tonight for me, has come up with a, a huge moment. You know, it couldn't have gone from Newcastle fans trying to get under Evertonian skin. It couldn't have gone much better, could it? The Pelton, Pickford, giving it large all night with him. But, you know, and trying to big up Anthony Gordon and obviously Newcastle get a penalty and who misses the penalty, it's saved by Pickford, you know. So that was a massive moment in the game. And that's why I give him man of the match. And tonight, I thought he was he was up to stand, you know, up to his standard that he set himself tonight. Obviously, he's going away now on an international break with England. He loves playing for England. Clearly, by some margin as well, he's England's best goalie. He can go away and enjoy that. I'm sure he'll be giving Anthony Gordon a little bit of stick while they're away on international duty together. But Jordan Pickford, I thought, much much better, much stronger performance from him tonight. Uh, and like I said, in my match reaction, I gave him man of the match tonight. Um, number two, our attack and play has to be better. It absolutely must improve. I just don't, th I don't know what we're trying to do when we're going forward. It's it, our, it, our only sort of attacking option cannot be 
bang it long to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. It can't be. It's 2024. There's many ways to play football. It's We do one or two things. And I know that's sort of contradicts. Not just that it can't only be that. It's majorly bang it long to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And then the other part of it is just give it to Willeman and Jai and hope that he can do something. Now, the issue with giving it to Willeman and Jai is, and, and he's a real, he is our sort of best player to watch, isn't he? There's not enough good runners off the ball. And that comes from coaching for me. I know some people will put that on players and say, we haven't got good enough. Players can always run. You can always run off the ball. You coach people, you make them better. Look at Newcastle. They've got some really good players and some average players. And the coach, obviously, Eddie Howe's done a good job. They play in a certain way. When you get the ball to Illiman and Jai, and he's going to come in, he, you know, he was slipping past Newcastle players like they weren't there. But in the end, he's getting crowded out because, don't get me wrong, sometimes his decision-making is not brilliant and he gives the ball away. But if he had other players running and dragging people into other areas, it would open up the pitch for him. We don't do that. We sort of give him the ball and then we sort of go, what are you going to do with it? And we stand and watch. Oh, that was a good little turn. We have got to be making runs and therefore that'll open up for him. It'll give him options to play the ball off and get it back or it'll open the space up for him to attack. Or if our centre forward spins in gaps, he can thread them through. Because right now, I was just watching Calvert-Lewin in the second half and I was just thinking, like, what is he supposed to do? There is that saying in football, living off scraps as a centre forward. Dom had one in the first half where he picked the ball up and went on a run himself and went past a couple of plays and it's a shot. Now, it was a tame shot. Pope caught it. I think it might have been potentially the only shot Everton had on target. Might, I might have that wrong. We might have one more, but that was the... It certainly didn't put Nick Pope under any pressure, but it was a run and a shot. Other than that, and obviously... Oh, actually, yeah, because Pope saved the one for the penalty. So, yeah, Dom had two on target. But we don't give him enough opportunities. We bang a ball up. He goes up and wins a header and knocks it down. No one's really near him. I thought Dwight McNeil I didn't have a very good game tonight whatsoever. You know, he was a match winner last week. I gave him man of the match last week. I thought he was really poor tonight. He just never got going at any stage in the game. Missed a great opportunity at the far post with about five minutes left. Took his eye off the ball because the core he was there. So Dom does have to do the, the battling himself. So we have to, in my opinion, we've got to improve that attacking side. I think that game, pretend, that game was there for Everton to win in the last 15 minutes tonight. And we didn't. Whereas when we played Newcastle back in December, I know it come from a slip, but we really went after them in the last 20. And we obviously scored three goals tonight. We looked scared. The manager looked like he was pulling people back. We were making sure we got nine men behind the ball at all times. And I, I just don't think that's a strategy that works for Everton. Certainly not a good one. So I think we have got to improve that attack and play. Even Jai is picking it up and skipping inside. We've got to have people making runs off the ball. It's just big. That's basic football. We don't do it enough. We sort of knock it and then watch the player. We do it when Jack Harrison, who isn't as good as Jai, picks it up. It's almost like... Go and create something, Jack. What can you do? We've got to we've got to move people about. Otherwise, it's easy to mark players. Put two men on Jack Harrison. He's going to give you the ball back because our players are stood around. So that is an area Everton have to improve massively. Our attacking threat, and it can't just be whack it long to them and hope that you might get in. It's 2024. We have to be a bit a bit smarter with the ball. And finally. Glass half full. Why not? Three games unbeaten. Um, yes, we've had a worse start than last season and I didn't think that was possible. We had seven points after seven games last season, I think it was, and this year we've got five. So we're, we're worse than we were last year, like I said. We haven't have only won one game out of seven, which is not good. With, well, it's really, really poor, to be honest. One own game we've won in four. But the positive side is we're three unbeaten. And we've gone into an international break. Now, hopefully, during the international break. Well, what it does immediately is Branthwaite's out for three or four weeks. It cuts two weeks out of that, doesn't it? So, he's touching go for Ipswich. If not, I think it's Fulham, I think, the next home game. He may well be back for that. Michalenko, similar thing. It gives 
Armando Breuer, who apparently the Albanian press was saying, or Silvino, their manager, was saying that he's being told that he'll be available in five weeks. So there's another couple of weeks off that. So it mightn't be too much longer till we have him as an opportunity. And hopefully Yusuf Chimiti as well isn't that far away as well. So if we can get those available and get them up to speed and ready, Seamus Coleman as well, of course, who's currently out, it just gives the manager more options. It gives the squad more options. We need those attacking options. We need... It, the manager seems to have seems to have given up on Beto. He's not got on the pitch the last... It's the three on the run now he's not got on. Lindstrom started last week and did taken off at our time, didn't get on the pitch today. Um, we need more options because the attack and play that is really poor that I've just been talking about then, it can be enhanced by better players. I just think as a whole unit, we need to be, we need to really, really that's the area we've got to really drill down on and make it better. I don't know whether this manager does that. The coaches are good enough to do that. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's one aspect of our game that hasn't been very good over his tenure. You could argue before that as well, absolutely. Um, but I do think we have got players who want to get on the front foot and have got good attacking players. Maybe just the mix isn't right. Maybe the instruction isn't right. But I really think that getting these players back, getting the squad as strong as it possibly can be, will give us more options. And that's why going into an international break with the injuries we've got, hopefully... They'll be available after the international break or certainly not too much longer after the international break because we're going into a run of fixes that, while it's tricky, there's also you know there's also points that we can win uh, during them, those games and we're going to have to. You know, we can't go through by not winning games, which is what we're doing right now. So there you go. There are my three talking points. Make sure you like, subscribe. Big thank you to everybody who has subscribed. Over 90,000 subscribers now. Thank you very much for that. Have a fantastic weekend. See you later.